So hello and welcome to Mount Aloysius College's student-led virtual tour. My name is Andy Klaus and I serve as the Director of Freshman Admissions and International Student Coordinator. With the challenges this, this pandemic has placed on students and families and the opportunity to see our beautiful campus, we decided to try to bring the tour to you. You're going to see our virtual campus map, uh, which can be viewed at any time on our website if you haven't done so already. I've also invited some of our student ambassadors that are seasoned pros at giving tours on our campus throughout the school year. They're joining me from their homes as they have taken time out of their busy schedules. So I'm going to let each one introduce themselves to you so you can learn a little bit more about each one of them. And we're gonna kick it off first with Sage. Hi, I'm Sage. Um, I will be a senior this fall at Mount Aloysius. I major in biology and I have a minor in psychology. Thank you, Sage. Luke. Uh, hi, I'm Luke. I've uh, just finished my first year at the Mount. Um, I'm an undeclared major. I'm from London, England, and I'm part of the uh, Mount soccer team. Thank you, Luke. Coming from across the pond. Um, Brianna. Hi, I'm Brianna Pritz. I will be a sophomore in the fall, and I am a ultrasonography major. Thank you. And last but not least, we have Riley. Hello, I'm Riley. Uh, I'll be a junior at Mount here coming up this semester. Uh, my major is forensic accounting. I've switched it from law uh, to accounting now to forensic accounting um, from Hagerstown, Maryland. Great. Thanks. A wide variety there, you know, students from um, all different areas. Uh, we, we really have some exceptional tour guides and ambassadors on campus and you know, that's what you're getting the opportunity to listen to and hear from today. Um, we're going to get things started. I'm going to try and share my screen here with that virtual campus map. And bear with me. And so as we get things started here, um, you know, we're, we're going to let Sage lead things off with our, you know, historic main administrative building, um, really right at the heart of campus. And this is where the campus originated from. And Sage, I'll let you take it from here. So um, the administration building is home to several different offices that are really important to students on campus, starting with the admissions office, um, where you can um, get accepted, where you'll do all of that paperwork to get accepted and etc. cetera. Uh, there's also the financial aid office where you can learn how to file your FAFSA, um, get information on different scholarships and any financial help you may need um, to attend Mount Aloysius. And then finally, the other really important office in the administration building is the business office. This kind of acts as the bank of campus. And it's also um, where students can go to um, pay bills, um, get checks from work study or other jobs that they might hold on campus. Uh, the administration building also uh, houses several different classrooms um, and there's different faculty offices in this building as well. So it's really kind of a central area on campus that students can go for a variety of different needs. Uh, behind the administration building is the Mountie Trail. So if you want to head there, Andy, we can show you. So the Mountie Trail is a just shy of two mile trail where students can walk um, and hike through the wooded area surrounding our campus and they'll be able to um, spend some time in nature, get outside, get some exercise, things like that. Great, thank you. Yeah, that Mountie Trail has been a nice addition to campus as we try to, um, you know, enhance some of the off-campus or, or maybe outside the classroom offer, offerings that we have. Um, and it kind of goes with that outdoors theme being situated, you know, in the mountains a little bit. Um, really has been a nice addition for students, not only, you know, for leisure, but also in the classroom as well. I'm going to keep things moving here. We're going to move to our chapel area and let Brianna kind of talk about that. The 
chapel at the mount was built in 1922 it is called our lady of mercy chapel the pews were actually used as a tuition payment by local residents in exchange for their daughter's education and the rose window is one-tenth the size of the rose window at notre dame some fun facts about the stained glass windows in the chapel the ones on the left hand side are from stories from the New Test or Old Testament and the right side shows the New Testament stories and the front shows the life of Christ. Sunday Mass is offered every Sunday at 7 p.m. and they also have weekday Masses on Mondays and Thursdays. Great, thank you. That's, a, that's really a beautiful facility. Um, you know, for students, it, obviously it's not mandatory for anyone to attend, but certainly a great place to go um, if students would like to. And, and again, it's optional. You know, moving on next, we're gonna stay with Brianna and move to our alumni hall, historic alumni hall. Yes, so alumni hall is used for a variety of, of events, anything from speakers, concerts, plays, and musicals. Uh, one of my favorite events that we had this past year in alumni hall was the Decades Dance. And Alumni Hall is definitely very historical. A lot of it was donated from Charles Schwab. Yeah, really a great facility. We, we've, we host guest speakers there. We have admissions events there. Um, obviously, you can see dances, um, different things going on. And, and the big thing that happened this past year was, um, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it was a big hit was uh, dancing with the students. Yeah, dancing with the students was huge. We had standing room only. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I have a feeling that event will be repeated in years to come. Yes, it will. We're already in the process. All right. <laughs> so, so sticking with Brianna here, we, we got a couple more places within this this whole main uh, administrative building area. You know, we're going to talk about St. Joe's and St. Gertz. I'm going to lead it off with St. Joe's, though. St. Joe's is a female freshman only residence hall. It has community style bathrooms and it does have daily house cleaning. On the first floor of St. Joe's, you can also find the health services center. So there is a nurse in there every day and a doctor comes in on some days. So anything that you may need while on campus that's health related, you can find there. Yeah, great. And I'm just, I'm giving 360 tours. Of course, you can always view these at any time. This, this um, interactive map uh, is, is open for everyone. Um, so feel free to utilize, especially once you get your residence hall placements uh, on campus, you'll be able to, uh, you know, kind of get a little closer look at the at your room and, and how you want to set it up and start planning. Um, you know, that was St. Joe's, here's St. Saint, Saint Gertz, as we like to uh, nickname it. And, and go ahead, Brianna. St. Gertz is also used as a residence hall on the second floor. These rooms are single rooms. On the first floor of St. Gertz, you can find campus ministry and Campus ministry is open to students of all faiths. Although we are a Catholic college, it is open to everyone, of course. They hold events throughout the year, including going on service trips. They've gone to Camden, New Jersey, Houston, Texas, and Guyana, just to name some few, a few of them. Great, thank you. Yeah, no, that's those are uh, those are good spots uh, for students. Um, I think sometimes maybe on the on the quieter side, you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, but um, definitely a great place to study and and get some work done while also meeting some people um, close hand. So as we kind of wrap up this this bottom portion of campus, we like call it the bottom portion because this is where the main entrance is leading into campus. Um, as we start to explore, you know, up through campus and move towards our Impson Hall, um, a lot of incoming students, and, and Luke, I'll let you take over, but a lot of incoming students 
start here? Yeah, so Imsen's a mixed uh, gender hall. It's predominantly freshmen, um, and it's home to around 200 Mounties. Um, it's currently undergoing a major renovation project uh, that will include a large social study area and um, room upgrades. Uh, the rooms right now are small and cosy, including an uh, abundance of closet space and wardrobe space. Um, each room has a private sink area, and you've got private bathrooms with a shower that are shared with one other room. Um, it also includes uh, several social lounging areas, TV areas, kitchen facilities, uh, free washing machines um, are provided as well. Uh, for me, Imsen quickly develops like a tight knit community feel, uh, which is kind of what the college is all about. Um, and the students, you know, adopt that pretty, pretty early on due to, I think, Imsen's, um, you know, the room's proximity to each other. Um, it's a great place to start your Mount journey. Uh, and it's seen pretty much most of the close friendships at the Mount uh, flourish, I think. Yeah, no, Luke, and, and the renovations are exciting. Um, but, you know, I also have heard, I, I've been at the institution for about 15 years now, and I've heard from previous students about how much they enjoy their time in Ibsen, even though it might be a little bit dated. Um, being in, in a little bit closer quarters, not that there's community bathrooms or anything like that, um, you know, really just making those friendships right away, you know, as freshmen or, or new students to the institution. Um, you know, I really have heard positive things about that over the years. Yeah. Right across from Ibsen Hall, we're going to move to Cosgrave, and I'm going to let Riley take over here and, and talk about our Cosgrave Student Center. Uh, so the major function that Cosgrave is going to serve is going to be our dining hall. It's where most students are going to go to for food and such, um, as well as if you're an off-campus, you can still purchase food and stuff there. It's like buffet style. So how the food passes work is that depending on which meal plan you choose, uh, they come with different amount of flex dollars and they come with your different meal swipes. Um, flex dollars, I'll get to it in a little bit. Um, but your meal swipes are weekly. So you swipe in, eat as much as you want, it's buffet style. Um, and then when you're done, you can just leave. Uh, there's a tray system and everything where you can put all your trash and everything. So it's really easy to clean up after yourself and keep the place clean as well and help out the staff and everything. Um, Cosgraves, the flex dollars that you're gonna see um, in your meal plans whenever you select those, those are for the Mac Shack. Um, the Mac Shack is kind of like a little store, I just kind of refer to it as kind of like a deli would be. Um, you can go there, you can get, we have a Starbucks in there now. Uh, you can get subs, sandwiches, you can get pre food. Um, you can get drinks, anything like that you want to get, you can get in the Mac Shack, and that's what you use your flex dollars for. Um, below Cosgrave, we have the bookstore. Um, the bookstore, you can purchase um, Mountie Apparel. Um, they have some really nice clothes and stuff in there. There's a lot of Under Armour, Champion, stuff like that, so it's not just cheap material or anything like that. They do have really good clothes and stuff in there. Um, the other major function that is called the bookstore is going to be for books and such. Um, we have on our website, uh, the Mac portal, you can put in all of your classes that you have and it'll populate and tell you which books are going to be required for all of your classes. If, if they're required or if the professor recommends them, they'll be in there. Um, and it'll even give you the ISBN number so you can either buy them from the bookstore or purchase them somewhere else if you find a better price. Um, but you can pick them up usually same day or they'll, they'll email you and let you know if they're going to be a little bit uh, in the bookstore there. Great, thanks. Yeah, the bookstore does a really nice job. Um, they, got, they have some good stuff in there. I, I'm in there on a regular basis. Um, and the cafeteria food, Riley, can you give us some insight on the, on the cafeteria food? Obviously, no one's going to be eating there this summer, um, you know, until students enroll in the fall. But, you know, what, what are your thoughts on the food? Yeah, so we just switched from, we had a different food provider the, my freshman year, and then we just switched to Sage, uh, which we just had this most recent year, this would have been my sophomore year. The food quality definitely went up. Um, absolutely, I find the food is much, much better. Um, they also have, which is really nice, they have an athlete section, so there's always, like, there's always grilled chicken and then, like, a filler, like, rice or something 
on the side there, which is really helpful as well. So you always have something there. There's a, usually like a pizza bar. So there's pizza every single day as well. Uh, there's usually some type of pasta. There's a salad bar as well. Um, there's like a sandwich bar. So you can go make any sandwich that you want to. There's always desserts and stuff there as well if you want to have anything like that. Um, one of the really nice things that Sage offers is they give us the ability where they have an app, you can rate their food. So if you had something, you really like it, they really appreciate hearing praises. And then if you tell them that, Hey, I really like this. Could we see it more? They'll email you back and let you know if they're going to have it uh, anytime soon, or if they hear a lot of students like it, they're going to bring it back sooner. Uh, same thing with, if you have a food and it's terrible, um, they'll, they'll, they like that advice. Um, you tell them, why it was bad and they'll try to fix it. I remember one of the days that I had some of their chicken and it was terribly chewy. And so I left a review and immediately got an email back from the chef saying that they were going to adjust the cooking times. And the next day when it was much better. So stuff does happen pretty fast there. And I mean, it can't get better without like your help. So if the food's not good one day, uh, you don't like something or something like that, then you can always leave feedback and it'll get better. No, that's a great review, Riley. Um, you know, I've heard positive things since we made the switch and, you know, we're happy to have Sage and, you know, we'll, we'll continue building on that relationship and, you know, they've always done well, at least from my side on the admission side, the, the events um, have always been really good and really well done. Um, so thank you. Next, we're going to move to Academic Hall. Um, so we're moving from our Cosgrave Student Center right next door. I'm going to let Riley continue to, to keep going here and, and talk about academic. So academic hall is just going to be, it, it's similar to Maine's second floor and that it's pretty much, I mean, it's all classrooms pretty much. Um, academic hall does have some offices and such like that, but it's mainly going to be used for um, academics, stuff like that. Uh, it's a lot of uh, accounting, psychology, uh, pre-law and history classes are going to be in here. Not so much nursing and everything has its own wing, which is Pierce pretty much. Um, but you, if you're in any of those areas, you're kind of going to be an academic pretty often. Um, religion is also in here. So whenever you go to the Mount, you are required to take two religion courses, one lower level and one upper level course. Um, and they don't have to be, I mean, there's a wide range of them. I know that for my, my lower level, I took world, uh, world religions. And then for my upper level, I plan to take um, cults. So um, you can do anything you want to. You're not forced to take any kind of classes of something that you're not going to uh, want to get interested in or anything like that. Um, really, it's just academics. It's just a place for classrooms and such. Yeah, and they have a few offices there. With they um, some smart board classrooms. Um, seems to be a, a nice setup over there as well. Um, moving on, we're going to steer off course just a little bit. Um, we're, we're going to go from academic hall and just give you a little view. We get, we have a pond here on the side of campus. Um, and, and I'll let Riley continue to talk about our, our pond. Yep. So there's a pond down there near campus. Um, it's pretty cool with the recent president that we had president Mills, uh, as you can see in the picture there, we had an outdoor day. And so we had a bunch of students come and, go fishing and everything like that, hang around the pond and stuff. It's just, it's a cool kind of, it's, it's just kind of a nice sightseeing thing to see on campus and uh, something nice to have that, you know, we can do stuff with as long as students are interested in doing stuff there. Yeah, it also feel, uh, kind of fuels into the, the biology programs and science programs on campus too, because I know they've done some studies there and studying the wildlife and, and different things, organisms. Um, in the pond area or, or there around it, especially, you know, kind of branching off that uh, Mountie Trail that we talked about earlier. So it's been, uh, it's been good that students have been able to use it for some research and, uh, you know, we'll continue to expand on that. And, and President Mills has done a, an excellent job or, or did an excellent job really bringing that to the forefront and, and getting us to utilize that even more. Um, you know, as we, as we move from our pond, um, we're going to hop back over to, to the Birchy Center. And I'm going to bring Luke back so he can talk about the Birchy Center. Yeah, Birchy's a great place to hang out and study with friends. Um, it's perfect for commute students during the day, like 
time between classes, but maybe not enough time to go home. Uh, it normally gets a bit more lively in the evening with resident students go to study. Um, students like myself often often go to Birchie for like group study work because other areas such as like the library, you know, um, you're encouraged to work more more quietly. But in Birchie, it's more it's, it encourages basically more group interaction, more communication. Um, it's also the home of the uh, technology commons. Uh, it's got several desktop computers uh, and printers that are easily accessible uh, for students. Uh, there's also a self-serve cafe in the center of it, um, which is ideal, you know, if you want a snack or a cup of coffee, if you're, if you're, in, uh, if, you're if you're partaking in a study session or one of the Mount's famous bingo nights. Um, it, it was our old gym, so that kind of lends itself to being able to host uh, a number of events including society and club meetings uh, student seminars student service projects and uh, banquets yeah this is a has been a great space that we reutilize i remember in my early years of coaching at the institution um spent many many long nights and hours in, in the what we now call the old gym but the birchie center um you know when we renovated that and redid it um it really really utilized the space um, and I think really maximized the space. And, you know, even though there's the learning center, we, we have the digital grotto there. Um, there's also a great space for students to, to kind of cut loose if they want to play tennis or volleyball. We got the sports court in there, um, not to mention the, um, you know, the banquets or, or different events that we have in there. Um, really has been a nice space for the students on campus. So thank you, Luke. Um, next, I'm gonna move on to our next residence hall. And I'm gonna let uh, Riley talk about Michonne. So Michonne is normally typically seen as like the seniors dorm uh, or upperclassmen dorm. Um, this one is typically the one that always goes first because it's apartment style. It's, they're kind of the, it's pretty much the largest dorms in that you get a living room and then you also, um, get a room with a, a roommate. Uh, it's similar to the other dorms though in that it is kind of suite mate style but it is pretty much four people are going to share the entire space instead of just two people sharing the room and then uh, you just share a bathroom with one another. Um, Michonne is going to be it's there's two main bedrooms which two people per bedroom and then you all get a, a living room to share as well uh, and then you all share a bathroom as well there. Um, Michonne is right next to Empson and it's also pretty close to Maine as well, which is another reason why Michonne is sought after by a lot of upperclassmen because when you go from a lot of uh, students will go from Empson to McCulley and then McCulley is pretty out of the way and it's kind of a far walk to the main hall. So Michonne is much closer. So it's much better to go into a Michonne. Definitely. Thank you, Riley. Nice, nice setup there. Um, Next, right, right beside Michonne, um, we're gonna move into the library and I'm gonna let Sage, welcome back Sage, uh, to talk about our library. So the library is at the top of the main campus. Um, not only does it offer beautiful views of the whole campus from its windows, but there's so many different services that are offered for free through the library. Um, there's peer tutoring, so students can get academic help from a peer or they can actually be a peer tutor and make extra money. Um, they also have several professional tutors that are experts in their fields that are able to uh, offer their services to students and help them with their academics. Um, finally, the library puts together SI sessions, which are like group study sessions that are run by a student, um, which can help students prepare for an upcoming exam or go and get some extra help if they're struggling in a certain class. Uh, twice a semester before midterms and finals, uh, the library hosts study night, which is an all campus event that allows students to seek help from one of these um, different services, study with their friend. There's snacks and therapy dogs that will help students de-stress. Um, and the library just offers so much to, to students um, for all of these different reasons. Uh, students may also have a few classes in the library. There's a handful of classes and including the new IT classroom which is in, located in the basement and it's got a lot of state-of-the-art equipment that is available to IT majors. 
Yeah, and that IT classroom is really state of the art. In fact, we're working on getting uh, like a little 360 tour of that classroom. It, it's that impressive. We we got to get that out more to the students. But yeah, the library is a great place. Ton of resources and like Sage said, um, tons of help there. Uh, so if you don't utilize it, that might be your own fault. Um, mm -hmm. Plenty, plenty of help there. Next, um, continuing with the academics, we're going to move over. And I'll move my screen up just a little bit and move over to Pierce Hall and, and let Brianna talk about it. Pierce Hall was new, newly renovated, so it's really nice. Definitely pr my favorite building on campus. Courses that are taught here are mostly related to science and math. It has labs for biology, chemistry, physics, anatomy, and physiology on the first floor. The second floor is home to radiology labs, nursing simulation labs, and a surgical tech lab. And then ultrasound labs are located in the basement, and there's classrooms all throughout. It has amazing resources for students. Everything there is really state of the art. And in the lobby, there is sitting areas where students can just sit there before class with friends. It's a great place to study as well. And it has a great atmosphere all around. No, for sure. And, and you walk into this building, sometimes you think you're walking into like a hospital or a, you know, a smaller clinic setting. Um, really state-of-the-art stuff for our students to learn and, and enhance their skills and get them ready to go out in the in the world um really an impressive building though and and we really thought and and put our time into putting all that together um really a great setup so thank you brianna um again folks you know you know tuning into this you know this is a small snippet of you know what campus has to offer when, when we're back up and running like you you truly have to come in and visit campus to really see it and feel it and uh touch it and and really get the the full full frame on things uh, but you know we're, we're trying our best here to to at least give you a little bit of insight while you're not able to get to campus um next stop though you know i'm gonna let sage take over and talk about macaulay hall so McCulley Hall primarily houses sophomores and juniors, and there's a lot of appeal for athletes to live here because it's so close to the uh, athletic fields and the ACWC is a short walk away. Um, and it's set up similar to Imsen. So there's two bedrooms that are shared by a bathroom. Um, for, so four students to one bathroom, again. Um, but these rooms are typically said to be a, lar a little larger and more comfortable for students than pre uh, freshman housing. Um, the building also holds a really large meeting room along with um, several uh, study lounges and there's laundry uh, services available on each floor. Each room comes with two dressers, two bunkable beds, two desks and chairs, and two closets for each student. So it's really spacious and there's lots of room. Um, and then finally, out on the lawn of McCulley is a large fire pit that just got placed there recently, um, where students can go, they can, you know, roast some s'mores and have a good time and get to talk to other students on campus. And it's a really great addition to our campus. Yeah, for sure. Um, I've heard of many, many nice gatherings at that fire pit um, and a lot, well attended by the students. Um, so thank you, Sage. Last but not least, you know, and just to show you our journey again, um, you know, we started here at what we call our, our bottom main area of campus. That's the historic side of things. And as you work your way up through campus, things kind of get newer and newer as you go. Um, so we're going to kind of wrap things up and I'm going to let Luke kind of guide me here, but we're going to start in the ACWC in our athletic facilities. And Luke, go ahead and take it from there. Yeah. So our athletic convocation and wellness center, or as it's 
known as the ACWC. It's the new home of uh, Mountie Athletics. Uh, it boasts a new indoor basketball and volleyball court and arena with seats uh, for up to 2,500 Mountie Maniacs. Um, many incoming athletes might be familiar with the building uh, because it plays host to a number of regional and state championships for sports like wrestling, basketball and many more. Um, the main gym uh, has been host to uh, community events uh, and uh, college events uh, like uh, music concerts. So there was a there was a country singer recently, but I I forget his name because it's not really my field of expertise. But I'm sure you can help me out on that. What was his name? Uh, Josh Gallagher. That was it. Yeah, that was it. <laughs> I was a lo uh, local star. Yeah. Um, yeah. The uh, ACWC also includes a modern state of the art fitness uh, suite facility, which is free for students to use. Uh, as well as an auxiliary gym for indoor sports team practices, um, an athletes only fitness suite, dance and yoga rooms, spin bikes, uh, and an athletic trainer as well. Um, uh, the athletic and business staff offices are in there. And uh, it also has uh, several smart classrooms and media rooms, which are useful for a few uh, classes and for like team meetings and stuff. Um, and also the athletic facilities also obviously extend outside of the building as well uh, Luke, so you like me to go next if you could go to the baseball field that would be fantastic okay. uh so our calandra smith uh baseball field uh is pretty newly refurbished uh, it's got both some new massive scoreboard which is actually on the side of the acwc uh new dugouts and an artificially turfed infield as well next stop uh Luke. Yeah, the mount also has uh, on-site a uh, separate softball field. And just behind the softball field is um, the stables, which is used for stores and also changing rooms as well. Um, we also have four tennis courts. Which are really nice outside. Yeah and uh, a new artificially turfed soccer field, uh, which has floodlights for nighttime practices and games and stadium seating as well. That's your ex expertise, right, Luke? Yeah, that's my area. <laughs> Luke, anything else you want to add to the athletic facilities or the, the Athletic Convocation and Wellness Center? I think I've pretty much covered a lot of it. <laughs> All right. Well, I appreciate that. Um, I'm going to stop sharing the map here. Um, first of all, I want, I want to thank uh, special guests, our, our professionals that we like to say um, in the student ambassador arena of uh, taking time out of their day and, and giving you this virtual tour. Um, I also want to thank everyone for their time uh, viewing the, this virtual campus tour. We hope to be back on campus soon so you can visit and see everything that we have to offer in person. And who knows, you know, maybe you can get a tour by one of these outstanding students uh, during your next visit on campus, um, or maybe even see them in the fall in the classroom. Um, but make sure you tell them you saw them, you said hello, and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll keep plugging away here and, and we welcome each and every one of you to the Mountie community. Um, be well, be safe, continue to check out our virtual admissions hub, you know, on our website, if you haven't, haven't done so already for the latest updates and information. And please don't hesitate to reach out if you need anything at all. If you would like to talk to one of these students, um, you know, maybe by email or something, send the admissions office an email and we'll connect you with them. And, uh, you know, maybe they can elaborate or explain anything um, or just answer some general questions for you. You know, we're glad you joined us. Um, and again, I really appreciate Brianna, Luke, Riley, and Sage uh, for taking time out of their busy schedules and, and being able to do this for us. So thank you, everyone. Be well and be safe. <laughs>